so Patrick came to me and he had been working out and eating right. And he wanted to make the most of this next bulk. He wanted to make sure that he could like build muscle and not get fat. And when Alexa's talking about newbie gains, it's like you get newbie gains when you first start working out. And then every next level where you focus on the better variables to pay attention to, you get the newbie gains again. So Patrick had been lifting for a couple of years. And the, the variables that are more specific to you. The variables that are, and yeah. What we'll talk about tonight, it's just kind of cool. So Patrick had been lifting for a couple of years and- He was very overweight. He came from being very overweight. In his earlier life. Yeah. Um, but man, to build 20 pounds of tissue, like if he had just been paying attention to the scale, he probably would have been so frustrated. Yeah. And this <laughs> is also- for all of our athletes, this is a massive part of why we harp on progress pictures. Mm -hmm. Like even if you're a woman on your period, us as coaches can see past that. We can see past the bloat. It's an important point of biofeedback to be able to see how your body is physically doing, whether it be inflammation, bloating, general water retention, um, water retention in specific areas, noticing stressed out, um, parts of your body, whatever it may be. It's a, another large part of, um, being able to assess how progress is happening. So mm -hmm. don't just, you know, rely on the scale. Um, I think we just, yeah, did, I, I, did I Kate get to join in. She was in the waiting room. Um, Kate, are you here? Yeah. Hi, girly pup. You're okay. the host. You have the What's up, Kate? I just want to say, uh, I'm here. also uh, solo at work. So I got to like, from, I'm like doing things, but I wanted to listen when I could. So, yeah, oh, nice. I just, I just keep thinking about how frustrating I would have been if I was just paying attention to the scale and I like wanted to get in better shape. And after a year, I had only lost two pounds without knowing that I was down 23 pounds of fat and up 20 pounds of tissue. Like, so you can it, feel it to a certain degree. Yeah, you can feel it to a certain degree, but I think everyone wants to understand how to build muscle and burn fat at the same time. Like that's like, that's the dream is you can do both at the same time. It is yeah. possible if you just pay attention to what's not working in your body and then how to fix it. And then you get to the transformation. So we're going to talk about that today. So this is, these are what we call our muscle building secrets. Like this is how we can guarantee people's gains. This is how we can guarantee that your fat loss phase is going to work, that your muscle building phase is going to work. And you don't have to just feel like you're guessing, which I think a lot of us do before we understand this kind of process. So these, this is our framework. This is the way that we coach our athletes. This is what we teach our athletes to learn how to follow this process because this is the this is the this is how we set the foundation that we can build upon. So um over the past what like six years, we we've probably helped over it like a like a thousand people. Yeah. I think so. We probably we've helped nearly a thousand men and women just completely transform their bodies and their minds. And this is a, something that Alexa wanted to talk about is like it all starts up here. So this is why we are extremely holistic. We're not just giving you a workout plan and a meal plan. We're fixing what's going on up here because it's the habits, the routines, and the mindset that's going to get you to where you want to be. That's a, um, Drea is one of my athletes in here. I think Jorge joined. Well. Yeah. Yeah, Jorge's in here as well. Jorge is one of my newer athletes, but this is zooming in on that aspect of the athletes practices, habits, routines, et cetera, is to me such a foundational part to being able to implement something that is going to be long lasting. You can go into a surplus or a deficit and start to reap some benefits because all, like all of your health is in order. But if you haven't addressed the habits, routines, and mindset required to maintain that, it's going to be short-lived. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one part that we're going to dive into um, in a little bit that I feel very strong. This is like, we're nerds for this stuff. Yeah. I, I love it. So like, if you remember something, it's health, habits, routines, mindset. And I know like Alexa has the slide going here and we were just talking about how like getting super jacked doesn't have to be as hard as you think. We've made it simple. We've made the process simple. And that was part of what we were focused on when we were, 
thinking about how we wanted to present this is I want it to be easy. I want it to be easy to do, easy to replicate. I want it to make sense. Um, but if you're wondering, like we've both been there, we've both been on either side of the spectrum. I have been toothpick thin. Do we have pictures? We do. This is us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think a lot of people probably look at us and they just think that like we were always jacked. And I'm really like, man, coming from where I was, and I'm, you probably feel the same way. Like, I'm really grateful to like, to know that, to feel like I'm pretty jacked. Yeah. Like I, I, I finally feel jacked. It's taken a long time. Dude, I don't know. There's some <laughs> days that I <laughs> How long though? Yeah. <laughs> There's some days that body just more of you be hurting, man. <laughs> Really hey guys, how long in between these transformation photos? Um, so my far left photo was pretty old, but I I was a I was a chubby, I was a chubster for a long while. Um, I just deleted all of the evidence of it. Um, I think that photo was probably around ten years ago on the far left. Um, and then the middle picture was when I was in college and I thought I was super jacked. <laughs> um, I believe that was twenty seventeen for or so. Um, so what was that like six years ago? Mm -hmm. Um, that might've been 2018, actually looking at that, uh, closet door. <laughs> um, and then the right side is present or that was last year. So mine, believe it or not, <laughs> the, if you just look at the hat and the glasses, I feel like this might tell you what, <laughs> what, what like, I guess like 2000, 2008 maybe a little Whoa. bit earlier 2006 okay so i think i think in that photo believe it or not i think i'm 19 oh my god I, that's i was a full-grown adult in that photo like i wasn't making adult <laughs> decisions you know i wasn't fully developed up here if you know what i mean but like i was I, that's that's what my body type was and i had i had lifted a little i was an athlete in in high school I was a competitive snowboarder in college. So I was snowboarding at this time. I didn't really lift weights. Uh, the photo in the middle is, man, uh, that's from, I was in Israel. So that must have been 2016, 17, maybe. And that was the first time that I ever like really tried to bulk. Like I, I just ate everything in sight. Alexa laughs at this. I tried drinking a gallon of milk a day. I oh just, I, there was not enough calories in the world. Really in my quick. Opinion. Hang on really quick for the audience. The reason that I laugh at that is because this man is lactose intolerant. <laughs> I and he know. was drinking a gallon of milk a day. I, I was drinking lactose-free <laughs> milk. I didn't know. I didn't understand <laughs> what I know now. I, I didn't understand what I know now. I figured, oh, I'm lactose intolerant, but this milk is lactose free. Like, well, you might as well slam a gallon yeah, of it every day. I didn't understand that like I was still sensitive to dairy. So this is where like, this is where our process comes in. If I knew now, if I knew then what I know now, I, I'm very confident I could have made this transformation in easily half the time. I see, I, easily. my transformation actually happened relatively quickly. Yours did because you had the, you had guidance. I did have guidance, but between my first two pictures, I can assure you there were lots of 1,100 calories plus hydroxy cut. All sorts, <laughs> all session. sorts of stuff. As as ashamed as I am. We're, we're not the only ones, right? Like I know uh, there's definitely stuff that you guys have done that you're like, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, dude, marketing. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the marketing works really well, but- Anyway, so yeah, the, probably between these pictures for me, maybe like 12, 14 years. Um, I am very confident that I could get from the left to the right, knowing what I know now. And I mean, I get I get our athletes there in at easily half the time, if that. Um, but as we went forward, like as we progressed in our journeys, we started to understand just the 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 way that that health plays a role. Like the way that we could optimize human performance, the way that the different the different systems of the body need to cooperate with one another in order to elicit a desired result, in order to be predictable, in order to be responsive. So 
what we found, and you guys have probably found this too, is that some strategies just work some of the time. I like that as simple as we can say, some strategies work some of the time. And that's never not true. It's never not true. Like there is literally like almost every strategy will work sometimes. Yep. But the determining factor of whether or not that strategy works will always come down to how healthy you are. Mentally and physically. Mentally and physically. You know, we've all been there where we tried to lose weight. We tried to go into a calorie deficit and it didn't work. Body got too stressed out. Brain was too stressed out. And even though we were creating a deficit, it just, our bodies were fighting back. Or you responded for a couple of weeks and then there it goes. Yeah. And I think a lot of them come down to like, you, we, we were kind of talking about it. A lot of it's like almost like shiny object syndrome. Like Alexa talks about like, oh, the hydroxy cut. Oh, the 1100 calorie Dude, diet. Hydroxy. Oh, the uh, commercials went hard. They, they did, but that's kind of what the, that girl with the But that's kind of what the industry relies on. It's like, what's the next shiny object? And don't get me wrong, like it's just not sustainable. It's it's not it's sustainable. Not it could be different foods. Hydroxy cut is definitely not great it's for your health. It's definitely not great for your health. But it could be different foods. It could be a different workout program. It could be more supplements. It could be more PDs or SARMs. Jesus, don't even think about SARMs. It's like we we need to be clear that more isn't better so like more food isn't better less food isn't better more drugs isn't better more supplements isn't better more workouts isn't better more cardio isn't better better is better and our process is designed to reveal what better means for you because everybody's different no two people will have the same protocols even if you're identical twins so more isn't better better is better number two is just because something works for someone else doesn't mean it'll work for you Right. My friends got Jack drinking a gallon of milk a day. I did not. <laughs> and then number three, like I said, the foundation upon which all results are made. Josh got severe. I got severe gut dysbiosis. <laughs> I like royally screwed myself up because I was just throwing shit at the wall and hoping it stuck. And dude, it was on the internet. Bro, it, it, it was on bodybuilding, bodybuilding.com forums. So, you know, yeah. You know. If you're old enough to know that reference. Yeah. <laughs> so number number three is the foundation upon which all results are made, whether it's building muscle, burning fat, doing both at the same time, re relies on your health. So whether or not any of these strategies work, and some strategies work some of the time, it will always depend on how healthy and well-functioning your body and your mind are. So the only strategy that works 100% of the time is to focus on putting your health first. If that's the foundation upon which all results are made, then that's what we, that's the only strategy that works 100% of the time. And it makes sense when you think about that, right? It's like, it's called health and fitness, not fitness and health. Like health, health has to come first. So that's what we do. We focus on optimizing health first. That's why we can guarantee results because as long as you follow the plan and you do the work, it works 100% of the time because healthy bodies respond. I kind of think of it like this. Our first phase is called assessment. Boop, boop. I made a Are we here? That. Assess. So our first phase is called assessment. This is where we identify the problems. So imagine this. This is, this is how I like to think of it. I'm a big analogy guy. Imagine you drive a Lamborghini, like super sick Lamborghini. Except, are there not sick Lamborghinis? Well, let me tell you about a not sick Lamborghini. Okay. <laughs> Imagine you drive a Lamborghini, but the wheels are out of alignment. The engine cooling and the fuel injection systems are broken and there's a hole in the gas tank. That is not a sick Lamborghini. Not a sick Lamborghini. Like you could still drive it, but it's not going to go very far, very fast. And probably if you did try to drive it, you would end up making things worse. Right. Like, I think we can all agree on that. That's not a car that you would like take to a racetrack. Okay. Now imagine this. Instead of a Lamborghini, you have a human body, which I, I hope that you do. If you're listening to this, I hope I that thought you were going to say I had a Ford Bronco or Ford something. <laughs> no, no, no. Imagine you have, you have a human body, which is sick. Only, 
only your muscle imbalances are causing poor movement patterns in your training. It's kind of like your wheels being out of alignment. Uh, your thyroid is all jacked up, kind of like a broken engine cooling system. Uh, your insulin resistant, kind of like a broken fuel injection system. Uh, and even though you feel fine, your digestion is like all over the place. You're, you're kind of bloated a lot. And you don't have good poops. You don't have good poops. And you're like burpy and gassy. And like the food that you're eating, the fuel that you're putting in your body is going right through you. It's not being able to be used. So that's like having a hole in your gas tank. Um, shout out to our ladies here. It is possible to have your menstrual cycle and not bloat to the, the dwells. Um, you're still going to experience PMS symptoms, but I assure you getting your internal health in alignment is going to significantly lessen the symptoms that you experience. And for a lot of you, shorten your cycles and make them less heavy, which is mm -hmm. super fucking sick. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I can't speak from experience, but I can speak <laughs> from the experience of helping people feel better about that. Um, so, so it, this makes sense, right? Like you would not drive that Lamborghini and like try to make it go really fast or like really push it. Why are we pushing our bodies like that? Why are we ignoring all these lights on our body's dashboard and being like, nah, man, I'm going to go straight to the transformation. I'm going to work out. I'm going to eat right. And my body's going to change. It's like, no, dude. Because hydroxycut can't put that in a commercial. But hydroxycut can that would not sell. <laughs> you know, like there's very few companies that have been able to sell on like a negative. Viagra is one of them. You could have an erection for four hours. <laughs> Guys are like, what? I'm like, <laughs> but this would not sell. So these companies, they, they try to give you the next shiny object or the industry tries to give you the next shiny object. And it's like, dude, this is health. Like if you're not healthy, it's not going to work. And you could still push to build muscle or burn fat, but you're not going to go very far, very fast. And if you do try to push it, you're probably going to end up making things worse, just like you would with the car. So this so, makes sense, right? Um, yeah. Can you? Go down a bit more. So when we're assessing, we're not just looking at digestion. We're looking at sleep, blood work, yeah. hunger signaling, your recovery, your energy, your mental clarity, um, your stress management. And when we're talking about stress, a lot of people, side note, sidebar, Dude, a lot everyone. of people do not recognize all of the things that actually induce stress in our lives. But a fight with your partner is stressful. We know that. An email from your boss. Is stressful. <laughs> we know that. Um, traffic. <laughs> traffic is stressful. A hard workout is stress <laughs> for your body. You may feel better. You may experience endorphins. It's still going to result in a elevation of cortisol, which is your stress hormone. A poor night's sleep is mm -hmm. stressful. Um, eating something like if Josh <laughs> were to drink a gallon of milk, <laughs> that is stressful. If I were to drink any milk, no, you can have oat milk. Uh, well, yeah, but like if I had any cow's milk dairy, instant digestive stress and that ultimately, and then I know if that happens, my digestive system is stressed. My blood glucose goes up. I don't sleep well that night. My mental health goes to shit. Like it's this cascading negative effect. And another, so the other side of your physical health. So all of the things that we just talked about that, um, have to do with things that are kind of out of your control. The things that are within your control is going to come down to more of your mental health. So are you in a state that when something stressful happens to you, that you can respond uh, accordingly as opposed to being reactive? Can you take a deep breath, center yourself, recognize that whatever is happening is not a direct threat to your well-being, and respond without allowing yourself to feel that tensing up stressful feeling that we get sometimes. Um, you know, like when you do get in, in a disagreement with your partner or you do have to sit in traffic, are you practicing stress management from a mental perspective that allows you to be able to breathe into that adversity, adversity, whatever it is, and work through it without getting your body into that fight or flight state? Um, so those two different sides of uh, the assessment phase 
come together and we are able to get to stage two, which is the priming phase. So during mm -hmm. stage one, we're collecting a lot of data. We're getting an understanding of um, the areas where you fall short. You know, maybe you go to sleep and you wake up throughout the night, wake up at 2, 3 a.m., can't get back to sleep. Don't mind how most of you. I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> oh, oh, you're good. Uh, um, that was my real. That was your real. <laughs> I know my real. I was like, that was your real. <laughs> the Metal Saints page is popping off. <laughs> um, so maybe you are having poor sleep. Maybe you experience some bloating throughout the day. Um, maybe you just know that your gut's not quite right. Maybe, you know, you experience fatigue. That's actually something that happened with Drea during her um, assessment and priming phase. We were trying to make progress with her getting into kind of a recomposition uh, period. So have her lose some fat and um, gain some tissue. And she was doing that, but it was not at a pace that was consistent with the efforts that she was putting forth. So she was on a meal plan. She was dialed in. She was doing a decent amount of cardio. And we weren't really seeing these changes happen. So during that assessment phase, we got her blood work done. And we were able to see that she very, very clearly has Hashimoto's. Um, which for those of you who do not know what that is, it is when our immune system attacks our thyroid instead of attacking the bacteria, getting rid of the virus. Um, so relatively easy fix. We need to, so that happened in the assessment phase, we found that in the priming phase, which is where we're at presently, we are working on implementing the solution. So she's on a thyroid medication. Um, and then we also have to do due diligence when it comes to protecting her uh, immune system. So mm -hmm. extra vitamin C, if she's getting sick, more NAC, staying on top of hydration, making sure that sleep is in a good place, so on and so forth. So really prioritizing all of the things that we know of Hashi's and Drea's schedule and all of the other things that are going on in her life mm -hmm. um, to come together to be able to get her in a place where she can get to stage three. Did you mm -hmm. want to add anything to stage two? I, I did. I really want to give, give people a visual. Yeah, do it. I think it's really give hard. The like analogy or whatever. No, no, no. I want to literally show people what this does. And it's funny that Nate just commented. He said he's doing his stress management right now. He's in the tattoo chair, which is <laughs> like my go. favorite sound, dude. I just got to make myself. <laughs> Give me that needle, so dude. Jealous. You know, that's one of my favorites. Um, <laughs> kind of stressful to be stabbed thousands of times with a needle over and over again. But um, <laughs> so I want to show people what this looks like, because I think we can, we want results fast, right? And I think a lot of people, when they, when they hear this process, they're like, but I just want to get to the transformation. Don't Taking know. care of your health will get you the transformation. So um, can we skip to the end and show them Nate? Nate's in the tattoo chair. So like big shout out to you, Nate. Okay. So Nate is on the top here. Nate came to me. He wanted to build muscle and had some issues with like, you know, sleep and hormones and digestion, stress management, training habits. He, he trained like a madman. And so that was really helpful. God, that, that's three months. Nate was our one of our last scholarship winners. Dude, you built some fucking Dude, real... you built some serious tissue in three months. Now, if you're paying attention... Legs and back. The assessment... Yeah, dude, his back... I know we couldn't fit it on the page, but his back is even more insane. And his waist stayed really tight. If you're paying attention... So the assessment phase is about a month. It's usually about a month of just collecting data, like Alexa was talking about looking at your lab work, figuring out what little pieces, little 1% improvements we can make to identify the problems, to identify the cracks in your foundation, and then go into phase two, our priming phase. Caveat to, to phase one, a decent amount of it also does come down to how long it takes you to kind of acclimate. For newer athletes, it's going to take a little bit longer to acclimate to working with a coach you're implementing a lot of habits that you have not previously done. So if you are a newer athlete and you have not previously worked with a coach, please be aware of that and don't be hard on yourself. Mm -hmm. it, you're trying to collect a lot of data that 
like you probably haven't paid a lot of attention to previously. So mm -hmm. good caveat throw that out there. But I, I just like I get I get so passionate about this because everybody just wants to jump to the transformation. I'm gonna work out, I'm gonna eat right, I'm gonna get jacked. You know, this kind of transformation from Nate, this this amount of tissue that he built, and this wasn't the transformation phase. Like we we went into his push to build to actually focus solely on building muscle just after this. But this is what happens when you take the time to assess your foundation and then prime it so that it can be strong enough to sustain the transformation. This is where the results come from. So like this is what we can expect. We assess, we prime, and then we transform. Um, now for a lot of you here, you know, we're heavily based in continued education. We can go back if you want. Um, well, I don't, I don't have to talk through anything. the other uh, the other ones. Oh yeah. Um, let's, let's do that then. Let's okay. do that first. And then I'll jump into what I was going to talk about with continued education. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. I'll just this, give this a, a brief little rundown on these two, uh, or on two of my athletes. So this bottom guy, um, it was one of my athletes. Uh, when we started working together, he, obviously relatively large human has to consume a lot of calories. Um, so at the time he was having, I believe 60 to 70% of his calories were coming from like a blended meal, um, typically protein powder as the source of protein. And that caused a lot of down regulation in the gut. So while there, there is a massive difference in leanness between the photo on the left and the photo on the right, what I really am looking to highlight here is the, the healthiness that we're seeing in the gut area. So massive reduction in bloating, a lot tighter of a waist. Um, and that comes the visual, being able to see that kind of change in the gut is due to having a very healthy upregulated gut biome. Um, so we added in probiotics. We got him having a gut health shake, which if y'all are on the team and you get the nutrogen, it's really freaking good yeah. um, for a gut health shake if you haven't had one. If you have had one, have some bad ones, and then you'll be able to really appreciate nutrogen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so worked on digestion and got that to a really, really fantastic place. So for me, that was the really big dub um, in this transformation. And then this bottom athlete here, um, this is my girl, Miss so Olivia. Um, I started working with her one week prior to her being hospitalized. Um, she was <clears throat> trying to get in shape, get fit. And she was doing that for a year. And there was one day I was in prep and I like, I'm pretty sure I stumbled off of the elliptical, but she came up and started talking to me, um, which I commend her because first thing in the morning, I look a little scary, uh, especially in prep. Um, and she was, you know, kind of telling me about what she's been going through and so on and so forth. And she was more or less starving herself for the better part of this year. Um, and her body basically shut down uh, her digestion was not pushing through her G GI tract and um, she ended up having a ruptured intestine um, and then it got infected um, and that kind of kept happening um, because her body was not physically pushing the food through her GI tract. Uh, tract. So on the left, she's eating, I believe it was 1,000 to 1,200 calories a day. On the right, <laughs> her food got as high as 4,200 calories a day. And we found 170 was her sweet spot for protein, but it got up to 180. This girl packs away food and she has built so much tissue. And this is one year difference between these two. And it's because she got healthy and she was able, we were able to get both her mind and her body to a physically healthy place 
Anyway, mm -hmm. Olivia, if you watch this after, I am so freaking proud of you for all of the physical and mental changes that you've made. Oh yeah. Um, and then this is Drea's client. So Drea, yeah. if you Did, wanted to Drea or Kate, I think Kate's here. I think Kate's working, but but this is my athlete Kate. Whenever she first came to me, she wasn't really following any kind of protocols. Um, gym was very inconsistent, nutrition was a lot of fast food not really a focus on protein, really didn't track water, steps, cardio, but she was a lifetime athlete. So she already had that drive and the grit to work. And whenever we got just protocols in place, we kind of assessed how things were going. We really primed what she was doing, um, implemented proper training protocols, proper nutrition. And then over here on the right, obviously you can see it, lots more muscle mass, really, really dense here. And this was done pretty quickly. Um, I can't remember an exact time frame. Kate, if you're able to speak, I don't remember what the time frame was between these two, but that's uh, all that long. nutty. That's, yeah. I'm pretty and sure that was ooh, February. And then that was November right before my powerlifting meet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This wasn't even like bodybuilding prep or anything. She is a former powerlifter and we're converting her over to wellness. But uh, uh, this is for athlete. her. She mm -hmm. took some national records at this meet, and so not only does she look good, but she's also strong as shit, you guys. Yeah, these <laughs> are these are both natural natural athletes. Yeah, uh, she's a natty girl. Transformations are natural. Yep. Um, and food never got too low either. Her food stayed relatively high um, for the amount of a cut that we had because we dropped what like sixty pounds in the course of those two photos. And we didn't ever get too low on food. Cardio is never higher than 45 minutes at the highest. All of you, all of you, excuse my language, all these little metabolic bitches that are so blessed <laughs> to be able to eat so much food. Y'all are the worst. <laughs> well, I mean, we all like that's actually kind of raises a good point. Like we all respond differently. Mm -hmm. Every single person responds differently, you know. If if not if if you don't have an individualized protocol, then you're doing what works for other people, and it's one size fits all, and it's one size fits none. I think this is not a bad place to kind of touch on this. I come from the chubbier <clears throat> background. I build tissue very easily. Um, I don't. It's super hard for me to get shredded. I have to go on not poverty calories, but kind of. Josh is the exact opposite. He gets, he stays shredded all the time, but it's extremely difficult for him to build tissue. So grass is always greener. Grass is always greener, but not only do we come from different like sides of the ecto meso endomorph spectrum, but we come from completely different genetic makeups. And that's why this process of assessing is so important because I couldn't just do what Alexa does. She couldn't just do what I do. It would never work. So we but have I to try. But you, Alexa's like, I want to try. I want to feel what it's like to be uncomfortably full all the time. And I do want to experience the... <laughs> that. It's, it's not fun. Um, but neither is starving yourself. So the grass is always greener. Um, so that's essentially our process. We assess, we prime, and we transform. And we have this list like we went over of things that we're paying attention to during our, I mean, during every athlete's time with us, like we never stop paying attention to their lifestyle, their consistency, their habits, routines, mindset, labs, biofeedback, training. We're constantly assessing. And then we're constantly making sure that they stay in that sweet spot. And that's how we get the results that we do. So I think at this phase, do you, I mean, it might be helpful for us to kind of like open it up and, you know, see if anybody has any experience, like personal experience with things that you're struggling with. It could be sleep. It could be digestion. It could be your training. It could be something that you're struggling with. Could be you can't find enough cow's milk. Could be that you can't find enough cow's milk. Either things that we've talked about here on this call that sound like maybe that's happening to me. If you're comfortable with sharing, if not, we can always talk, talk privately. Um, but this is, this is our assessment. This is how we start to figure out where the cracks in your foundation lie so that we can prime them and fix them and develop a strong foundation for your transformation. And in the process, we get results like these.
I am going to go ahead and say this. A lot of people, myself included, <clears throat> prior when hearing this, I probably would have thought I don't have any cracks in my foundation. Yeah. In the same breath, knowing what I know now, I would encourage you to pay more attention to all of the things that we talked about earlier. So your sleep, your digestion, your recovery, your bloating, um, water retention, all of these things, um, your energy levels, your mental clarity, um, pay close attention to them. They're, it, since you've never experienced what it's like for them to be in alignment and very perfect, there's typically room for improvement. Yeah, I think a lot of times this is one of those I don't think you know, I've gotten a client that there has not been something never. with their health, uh, internal health that we couldn't improve. No. And there's not something that we, you and I can't improve. Yeah. Like that's why we have coaches too, is, you know, we need someone to see from a third person's perspective and give us a little bit more logical reasoning. Whereas human beings were emotional and we may make the wrong decisions for ourselves because, we want to build silly muscle. Little geese. We're silly. We want to build muscle, but then all of a sudden we feel a little fluffy and it's like, well, maybe you're just inflamed. You're not gaining fat. Maybe you're just inflamed. There's probably something that we should look at, but instead we're silly little emotional geese and we go, oh no, I'm going to pull my calories back down because I don't want to get fat. You're shooting yourself in the foot. So we pay attention to these things. And I like to use an acronym. Uh, you guys may be familiar with it, but I call it shreds and I'm going to drop it in the cat in the chat. And that stands for sleep, hunger, recovery, energy, digestion, and stress. And if you pay attention to those things and you identify what you're having trouble with, and that may be sleep, you may sleep through the night, you may fall asleep and stay asleep, but you wake up and you feel kind of tired and a little groggy. Well, we should look into that. You're probably not sleeping very well. You may be sleeping enough, but it's not very quality. Or you have super high quality sleep and you have Hashimoto's, but you don't know it. Yeah. There's there's always some more digging that we can do. But if you pay attention to these basics and just like on your car, you pay attention to the lights that come up on your dashboard. There's a check engine light. You take it to a mechanic. Think of your shreds as your check engine light. Follow up. If a doctor tells you that your concerns are not to be worried about, find another doctor. Doctors, and don't get me wrong, I we need doctors. <laughs> I'm grateful for doctors, but our medical system, I'm not sure how it is in other in like I know Chris, you're in the UK right now, but over here in America, oh, they it's just, way better there. They just want to make sure you're not sick. And that does, that's way different than making sure you're as healthy as you can possibly be. I don't even feel like all doctors want to make sure you're not sick. Some doctors Some are doctors like, just that's my money. Give me, yeah, just let me write you a prescription, you know? But for what we're trying to do, to build muscle, to burn fat, to gain control over your body, your metabolism, your mind, like to, to, to make these changes that we make, we don't, we can't just not be sick. We have to make sure that all systems are optimized. You know, you wouldn't take a shitty car off a used car lot, not take it to a mechanic and take it straight to the racetrack. I would. You know? <laughs> sounds, Alexa's built different. Sounds dangerous. But, <laughs> no, we need to assess. We need to do a diagnostic. We need to make sure that the internal systems and everything that is inside the body works together cooperatively, optimally, synergistically, and then that's how we're going to get the best results. So, so back to when we were like, does anybody have anything they want to contribute? Yeah. <laughs> if anybody has anything they want to contribute. Because we could talk about this forever. I actually do just real quick. So one thing that I had a client tell me was that their blood work came back normal from a doctor's standpoint. The doctor said everything was fine, but you have to look at the blood work as an individual. You can't just assume that it's okay because the doctor says it's okay. And sometimes this is where having a coach look at it, especially if you want a physique transformation, having a coach look through your blood work can be a lot more beneficial than having a doctor tell you you're fine. So go ahead. So look. really quick asterisk to that. When you are looking at blood work and you are looking at your test result relative to uh, the wow. reference range. Reference range. Thank you. The reference range includes everybody under the sun. So that includes... 98 year old 
smoking grandma Mary who just smokes a pack of cigarettes a day. She is included in that reference range. So your basis of what optimal health should look like should not be in comparison to somebody who is 98 years old smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. Mm -hmm. You want a tighter range that is more applicable to you, your uh, your sex, your age, mm -hmm. et cetera. Men know this. How many men in here have gotten their test levels checked? We can just oh, do a quick show of hands. Chris, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I have. You, have you should. So how crazy is it? And I don't know you, what your results were, if you're comfortable sharing them, but like, I remember, and I've had a lot of clients, males get their test levels checked and their doctors are like, the range is 200 to like 1200, depending on the labs. Mm -hmm. And the doctors are like, you're, you're in range. You're, you're at 300. You're fine. Yeah. It's like, bro, I'm, I'm fine. My grandfather has higher tests than I do. Like, what are you talking about? So, well, your grandfather probably doesn't. Like he's your blood grandfather. I, I, my dad definitely has higher tests than I did. Oh, uh, damn, I, I really? Admit, yeah, my dad. Yeah. I mean, my, my dad's also like, he takes care of himself. I, <laughs> I, at that, I started getting my labs done. I was 27 years old and I went to my doctor. I said, I wanted to get my test levels, my hormones checked because I was exhausted. I had no energy. I had no motivation. Like I had all the symptoms of low tests. And my doctor was like, you're 27. You're fine. And I was like, dude, what do I have to wait till I'm like, like really struggling over here? So I went and I ordered them myself online and my levels were like somewhere in the 400s. Um, and I'm pretty sure my dads were probably higher than mine at that point. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there was a, I remember there was a 60 year old dude in the gym who I was talking to about and his levels were at 600 and I was like, what's going on here? So anyway, if you take, if you do, if you take follow this, the process of like assessing, dude, of course my levels were at 400. I wasn't taking care of myself. I was sleeping like shit. I was drinking a gallon of milk a day. You know, I was fucked up my digestion. I was doing all this stuff that I thought was right. And it was just pushing me in the wrong direction. Cause I didn't, I couldn't like separate myself from it emotionally and like take a step back and assess. And that's why a gallon of milk a day purchase. is outrageous, but the same thing is applicable. Girlies, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw us under this bus. Cause we are the ones that are typically more guilty of it. The same thing is true with doing way too much cardio, not eating enough food and pushing yourself to the brink on that one. Um, it's the, a gallon of milk a day is fucking ridiculous. And if you don't think so, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Who that you was a big about. thing when I was younger. Yeah. But <laughs> the same thing is true for doing way too much. It's all just stress, like physique enhancement, building muscle, burning fat. It all just comes down to stress. Too much cardio is a stress. Drinking milk if you're dairy sensitive is a stress. Poor sleep is a stress. Like, and they all connect with one another and they create this like domino effect. So if you go to a doctor, Dustin's they're gonna at 184. And the physician put you on Clomid only until okay. So Clomid is a with free test at four. Wow. Um, so Clomid is a strategy that I know some HRT clinics and doctors will use. I'm not a huge fan of it. I've seen it work in in certain uh, in, in certain populations. Um, when was that? Did it, did it work for you? Because I've seen it work phenomenally for some people. Other people, they they need TRT injections. Really quick, Jesse, you and your baby are so cute, and your Super bangs cute. are so cute, and so I'm cute. so distracted by your cuteness <laughs> this whole time. I know, I was very distracted by the cute baby as well. <laughs> oh my god, the bangs. Okay, this is what I wanted my bangs to look like when I cut them oh last year. God, yeah. They look so did. good on you. Alexa was like, I think I want bangs, and all of a sudden just like cut them off. Like, didn't, didn't even hesitate, didn't even think. I know you did. <laughs> I looked like the dumb and dumber guy though when I did them though, because they were like kind of round. Oh, no, Dustin, dude, it didn't work for you. Did, I mean, did you get help? Did you go on TRT? He's on TRT. He's on TRT. Okay, yeah, and and that's and that's it. There's a different solution for everyone. I think when I went on TRT, I I definitely I think I could have done better. Eventually, of course, I was going to go on TRT. I think I probably could have waited a little bit. I think I there was some lifestyle modifications that I could have made 
to improve my natural test levels. Now, because mine were around 400, Dustin, for you, if they come back under 400, most of the time, we do need, we do need a, a TRT or an HRT you can make, replacement. You can make those improvements, but it's unlikely that you're going you're to not going to get from 184 up to 900, you know? Um, so everyone's different. You know, we, we all have things that work for us and things that don't work for us. And that's our job is to figure out what does and what doesn't. And if you don't want to go on HRT or TRT, um, <clears throat> but you want to work to get those levels as high as you can naturally, that's what we do. So dude, I have a, this wasn't, it wasn't sustainable, but before I decided to go on TRT and before I had the awareness to focus on all of the things that we assess here now with like sleep, digestion, all the stress management things. I did put together a protocol for increasing tests that basically was like dietary cholesterol, dietary selenium. It was like eggs in the morning and evening. It was Brazil nuts in the morning and evening. It was almonds every day. It was pretty high fat. Um, I think it was about 50, 55 grams of fat a day, just this part of the protocol itself. So it wasn't super sustainable if I wanted to get shredded, but it did get my levels from in the 400s to like 750. And it was just, it was just dietary. So like we have, we have strategies, we have protocols, we have structures. Um, but now on top of that, we have a much better understanding of the human body and how all of these things are intertwined. So it's cool. I'm a huge nerd for it. Um, also really quick through working on the mental health side of things, we work on how your day goes. So what does your morning routine look like? Are you doing things to effectively stress, manage stress throughout the day? What does your evening routine look like? Are you unwinding at the end of your workday, shutting down enough so you can mentally check out and be present and doing something that helps you to feel calm? And then what are you doing right before you get in bed? Are you mm -hmm. aimlessly scrolling on your phone? We've all been guilty of it once, don't lie. Or are you putting it in the other room, doing something that actually calms you down, being present with your loved ones, your pets, whatever? And we do that because we understand the we understand the correlation between your hormone function and your daily routine. So if your daily routine is thrown off, if you are having poor sleep, poor digestion, if you you are having trouble falling asleep if you're wired at night you have an imbalanced cortisol curve bunch of melatonin to help myself go to bed because that's what the doctor told me to do we don't want to just put a band-aid on that we want to address the root cause why is your melatonin not rising to allow you to fall asleep well it's because you have an imbalanced cortisol curve why do you have an imbalanced cortisol curve it's because your mornings are so stressful and then you're stressed throughout the entire day into the evening and you're not actually allowing cortisol to come down so that melatonin can rise so yes, we utilize supplementation to address a lot of this stuff, like it's an important part of our priming phase, but equally, if not more important is your habits, your routines, your mindset, because that literally does dictate the hormone profile that you have. Stress will kill you. Like at the end of the day, all this comes down to stress. It will make or break you. So all we're doing is we're giving you the tools to better manage it and be aware of it. And until you're aware of it, until it's trapped, it can't be changed. So um, Bing bong. I hope, do you have anything else? I hope this was helpful. We talked about so much stuff. We talked about so much stuff. I know it seems like a lot, right? <clears throat> Take a step back. We assess, we prime, we transform. We just pay information comes. It's, it's really that simple. We just want to give you the tools and the things that you should be paying attention to. Do those, do those of you guys, do those of you guys here feel like you have a little bit better of an idea of like what you're going to be paying attention to moving forward? I want to make sure this was like helpful for y'all. Hell yeah. yeah. Sophia said yes. Good. All right. Awesome. Does anybody have any questions? Or hey, do you always lift at this time? So late. <laughs> you still muted, shoddy. 
Yeah, it's like my bedtime. Nah, today was a rest day. I'm just in here like <laughs> stretching. Uh, I was here oh. with my athletes, but okay. they're all gone. Nice. Nice. Yeah. That sounds great. Um, well, hell yeah, dude. If yeah. nobody has any questions, this was fun and super fun. My forehead's so shiny under this one. <laughs> I know. Question This yeah. might be a it's just, just more like a what are your thoughts? Uh, and it might pertain to some people here and it might, might not pertain to others, saying it might pertain to me. Um, so, <laughs> possibility of conception, like in later stages of TRT use. So like me as a competitor, like I kind of started a little bit earlier and I know I not I don't want to be a father now, but I would like to be a father in the future. What are possible ways you can like, I know ACG treatment, but like, do you guys think that's possible? And if so, like, hmm. should, so, we give him, should we give talk about Johnny's protocol? Oh my God. Our mentor's protocol blew the doctor. Yeah. Like, like the doctors were like, tell us what you did and how you figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i'm gonna let you take this one um okay so first thing out there it's as a male it's never a bad idea to um go to your local drugstore and grab some uh fertility tests um and kind of like generally keep an eye on that um it's obviously not going to be completely conclusive um but it will kind of give you like an idea of where you're at that being said, being enhanced and being responsible, I think this is going to apply to men and women. Um, it's it's the same for men and women. If you are getting to a point where that becomes in question, you're for women, obviously it's very explicit. Men, you guys have to check. There is something going on that is not properly functioning for you. So that would have to take you back to the um, priming phase, or I'm sorry, the assessment phase where we're getting a really good understanding of what's going on internally. <clears throat> now, that being said, that is not something that we do. We do not aggressively abuse PEDs with any of our athletes. Um, I have always had a healthy menstrual cycle. I have always had athletes have a healthy menstrual cycle unless they're working through PCOS-like symptoms. Same thing is going to be true for men. Um, as far as like going on to TRT, are you asking like, does that immediately reduce your fertility? Uh, I was having trouble unmuting. My bad. My bad. Okay. Um, so. It was more. It was more in, pertain, in pertaining to as a competitor. Like what? Uh, what should I set my expectations to, and what are the possibilities? Because I mean, we're looking at like we're looking at like sebum. Like yeah, but the man's also a genetic freak, so he probably doesn't need the kind of uh, usage I do to get to a certain stage. So I would just like right. to understand like what is the risk to reward ratio in your consideration. Right. So I, at least part of that is going to come down to getting an idea of where you're at presently from a mm -hmm. count. Um, and then it's also going to be super relative to how you respond to things. So typically when we see a loss in fertility, whether it be male or female, we are going to see symptoms coming prior to that happening. Um, so you'll see male powder pattern baldness, estrogen dominance, um, you'll see down regulation of different symptoms. We'll see issues with sleep, um, which is caused from a severe lack of estrogen. A lot of people demonize estrogen, but you actually need it to be able to sleep. Um, we'll see a lot of different symptoms, assuming that when you start, your sperm count is in a decent place. Now, fortunately for men, it is... You guys honestly have it so fucking easy and you don't even know it. It is wicked easy for men to get their sperm count back up. It is it is not difficult. Women, not so Clock, much. Clock's ticking, dude. Not so much. <laughs> we are a little bit more complicated when it comes to our bits and pieces. Um, but there, again, are a lot of different things that we can do should you be in the position, not necessarily from enhancing, but potentially a lot of PCOS, uh, women with PCOS 
do struggle to get a regular menstrual cycle, which then impacts their ability to get pregnant. Um, so regardless of what it is, um, men for enhancing, you would have, you would have to go so far. Any other questions? This has been fun. Ping bong. Ping bong. All right. Dude, yeah. fucking Chris, you are a trooper. It's like, dude, that's what I'm saying, man. Time, man. <laughs> I know. <laughs> There was a time I was getting I was late. Gonna be yeah, like, so late. I was almost going to be like, Chris, go to bed. I'm, I'll send you the recording. I'd, I'd rather get you sleep. <laughs> Dude, I know that I yawned like two, three times during that. And as soon as I, I yawned like, so many like, times, I was like, shut up, dude. He is hanging in the UK. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm a night owl. Uh, well, thanks for joining us. Yeah, I really appreciate, appreciate you having it on. And yeah, thanks so much, Chris. This has been great. So thank you, everyone. If, if any of you guys have questions, um, I believe you all have my phone number or obviously you have your coach, um, but feel free to use this as a resource. We want to be able to help you guys out no matter what. And we probably have a guide for like for everything, for sleep, for digestion. Like if there's a problem, we have a guide to help you learn how to fix it. So um, don't be strangers. We want to help. Jay I also dropped our Instagrams up in the chat. So oh, if, if you, you guys want to follow connect. us. Yeah. yeah or talk about anything just nice. yeah. talk about your feelings or whatever <laughs> or how much milk you used to drink oh my god <laughs> um all right guys well thank you again appreciate your time and i'll see you in all your lovely beautiful faces all right <laughs> love y'all have a great night bye all friend right, love y'all thanks guys